God bless all of you. I am I am so I'm so blessed today. I'm so happy to see all of you. I'm really happy to see all of you. Uh, amazing to me is that we took in 15 new um, members of the School of the Prophets University on last week, and we wasn't even broadcasting. Um, that tells me something. That tells me that many people are listening. And even though they're not members of the School of the Prophets University, they're listening. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I want you to share today's message because a lot of it is from personal experiences that I have encountered and is also written of in the Bible. Um, I'm talking today uh, about backstabbers, you know, yeah, backstabbers, you know, um, and I want to explain to you what a backstabber is. Many of you, I don't care whether you are in the kingdom of God or not, you have been stabbed in the back. <laughs> you can be saved, you can be unsaved, um, it doesn't matter because it's just a part of the process. God is taking you somewhere. The Bible says he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. There are people that you have helped, people that you have promoted, people who you have embraced. You know, my Aunt Minnie, I know Davida, uh, Jackson might be listening. That's my cousin in Washington, D.C. Her grandmother was my aunt. And my aunt Minnie told me that the enemy can only hurt you if they can get close enough. You know, And but God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemy. And Jesus tells us to love our enemy. Because why would I love my enemy? Because your enemy is there to push you forward. You know, another thing that God revealed to me, and I got to go to the book of Colossians in a minute, but another thing that God um, showed me this week, Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But many times he got to move you to a new location. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe he got to move you out of state. Maybe he had to move you out of the country. You know, he did it to Abraham. You know, he said, Abraham, get thee out of the, get from among your kindred and go to a place that I will show you. So sometimes God will move us, you know, move us into a new city, a new location in order to prosper us. You know, so I want to talk about backstabbers and I want to explain to you what a backstabber is. Amen. A backstabber is someone who says horrible things about you when you are not there to defend yourself. I'm going to say that again. A backstabber is someone who says horrible things about you when you are not there to defend yourself. Amen. And I've been through it, beloved. I mean, I've been through it. You know, I'm 72 going on 73 now, and life has taught me, you know, um, I've had them in my life, and that's why I am successful. Amen. I mean, that's why I am successful because, because of backstabbers, you know, because of people who said horrible things about me, and I was not there to defend myself, even in the church. Even people said things to bishops and apostles and evangelists about me, and they wouldn't come and talk to me about it. They believed what they said. I went from making almost $300,000 a year to being broke because of backstabbers. Hey Amen. I'm talking about <laughs> they can be in your family. Joseph had them in his family. Joseph in the Bible had brothers who stabbed him in the back, plotted to kill him. 
Amen. But he ended up being the prince of Egypt. He ended up being over Pharaoh's house. So don't, don't fret yourself because of evildoers, because of backstabbers, because you're going to have them if you got a vision. You know, if you're going somewhere, if you're praying, if you believe in God, the good thing is about it, the good thing about it, I'm, I got to get to my word. The good thing about it is that God, according to Ephesians 1 and 3, he has matured us in Ephesians 1 and 3. He has blessed us with all spiritual gifts in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I don't know if you ever read that or not, but the, one of the greatest spiritual gifts that is not preached too much in the church is the spirit of discernment, the spirit of the word of knowledge. Look, we are so blessed in the fifth dimension, I'm going to say that again. I just left the fifth dimensions in um, in Las Vegas. You know, Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis and Lamont McLemore and Florence LaRue. I just left the fifth dimensions. Been knowing them over 50 years. Amen. You know, but we can hear things and we don't have to be there. God, just like God. God hears everything that your enemy is saying. And God will reveal it to you, what they're saying. You ain't got to be present. It's a spiritual gift. It's a spiritual gift. So I'm quoting. I want to get into this word because I think this might be, this might end up being three parts. <laughs> hey man, I'm happy to see all of you. I mean, I had so many people saying they're going to be listening to this message two weeks ago, a week ago. Are y'all all right? Now I'm quoting from the book of Colossians. Check this out. I'm quoting from the book of Colossians, chapter number 1, verse number 12, and verse number 13. Giving thanks unto our Father, who has made us able, come on, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. I'm telling you, the inheritance that we are partakers of is called the blessing. And God blessed us with all spiritual gifts in heavenly places in Christ Jesus in Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 3. And one of those spiritual blessings is the word of knowledge and discernment. You don't have to be there to hear what they're plotting against you. You don't have to be there to hear what they're planning against you. The, the, the spirit of the spiritual gifts that we have, my God will tell you and show you what they're planning. Amen. Like he always done. Like he's always done. That's the spiritual gift. And the church is so busy trying to tickle your ears and make you happy and shout, they ain't teaching you spiritual gifts and what they are. I am, good God Almighty, you know, I am an ambassador of Christ, and I'm going to teach you things. And I want you to pray for those things that you are lacking in the spirit. The Bible said he has blessed us with all, not some, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when I tell you, or when the Bible tells you that he has blessed us with all spiritual gifts in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, one of those are the spirit of discernment and a word of knowledge. Amen. Now, verse 13 of Colossians chapter 1 says that he has delivered us from the powers of darkness, from ignorance, from being dumb. Amen. From, from not knowing. He has delivered from demons. He has delivered us from the powers of darkness. And he has translated us. Come on, y'all. He had he moved us now. The word translated us means he moved us. Amen. Um, he has translated us from darkness into the heavenly kingdom of Christ Jesus. He has translated us into the kingdom of Christ our. Messiah. Now, the Bible 
the word of God tells us about backstabbers. It's in the Bible if you tore the page out. And what is a backstabber? A backstabber is someone who says horrible things about you when you are not there to defend yourself. And I don't care, again, I don't care who you are. You can be saved, unsaved. You can be in the kingdom, not in the being, not be in the kingdom. All of us have had them. All of us have had backstabbers. The OJs had a song called Backstabbers. They smile in your face, and all the time they're trying to take your place, the backstabbers. I took a musician. You know, back in 1977, I was in the studio, and I had an attorney named Bill Thompson in Washington, D.C., I had an attorney that gave me $10,000 to record, It's My Pleasure. And I went and got one of the best musicians in Washington, D.C. And I, I could call out his name, but it's not necessary. You wouldn't know him anyway. But I took one of the best musicians in Washington, D.C. to my attorney's office. My attorney's office was in the same building. It's called the Katy Building. That's where they used to show the, the movie Dallas. The, the attorneys in Dallas was in the Katy building on 10th and K Street Northwest. And so I took my a friend of mine who I used to admire. I took him to my attorney's office. And my attorney had given me $10,000 to record some songs. And I said, I want you to meet my attorney. We went to the boardroom. And we were sitting down talking to my attorney. You know, and I'm telling him about, you know, this guy. And I would like for him to you know, head up the band and everything. And, you know, and this guy who I took to my attorney's office looked at my attorney and said to him, I'm better than Jerry. You know, you should have had me. You know, I can do this better than Jerry. And I'm saying, man, why would you do such a thing in my face? And he actually did it in my face. You know, and my attorney said, you need to get rid of him because he's a backstabber, you know. So I've, I've had it in my face too. Not only did he say something, you know, behind my back, but he got in front of my attorney and told him that he was better than me. And I took him to my attorney's office. I mean, you know, I'm not a political man. But I just saw this week where someone who was elevated to the position of a senator, you know, and the person who elevated them to the position of a senator, they turned around and back that person's opponent. You know, to me, I mean, you can do what you want to do. I, I'm not, a, I'm not going to be a judge on that. You know, but if you elevated me to a position of a senator and I'm going to turn around and back the person that's running against you, I'm a backstabber. I don't care what you say. You're talking about, well, they had a choice. They could back whoever they wanted. But I put you in that position. And there'd be people that you put in position. My God. They will turn around and bite you in your back. And I know you've had it. Amen. People that you trusted. It's in the Bible, y'all. I mean, come on. This started in heaven. It ain't just started on earth. I mean, this started in heaven. When the Bible tells you that there was a war in heaven and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon prevailed not, what started that war in heaven? Why was there a war in heaven? Because Satan was backstabbing God. Can you imagine? God created the devil. All right? God put him over the music. You know, God put him over the music in heaven. Come on, y'all. You know, and then he turned around and tried to backstab his creator. Now, if he, come on, if, if this started in heaven, if the devil tried to backstab God, you ain't got a chance down here on this planet because if, if the devil tried to backstab his creator, come on, come on. It, start, it didn't just start here. It didn't start with you. It didn't start with me. This took place in heaven. The Bible said there was war in heaven. What started that war? Well, the devil started that war by trying to take over heaven. You'll find out that the devil took a third of the angels out of heaven with him, and he was cast out of heaven. And he, and where did he come? He fell on the earth. 
Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Well, he was kicked out. Michael and his angels kicked him out. Amen. But this devil who God created, he didn't create him a devil. The Bible said evil was found in him. Now watch this. In the book of Isaiah, it tells you, why was the war in heaven? What did the devil say in heaven to backstab God? God turned around and told the devil what he said. Yeah, man, like, and that's the kind of gift that we have. We have the gift to tell people, I know what you said. I know what you did. You know, and they be wondering how you know. It's called a spirit of discernment. It's called a word of knowledge. And it's a heavenly gift. It's a gift in Christ. If you're really in Christ, you have this heavenly gift. Everybody don't have it. Amen. But some of us got that gift. I got that gift. My wife got that gift. Dr. Gloria, my God. I mean, you know, uh, they say that, you know, some of us can, we have such a gift, we can hear a rat pissing on cotton outside. So watch this. God tells Satan what his plans was while he was in heaven. He was going to try to overthrow God. Come on, y'all. You know we ain't got a chance if the devil try to overthrow God. And you're a child of God. Amen. He's going to try to overthrow you. He want to take over. Amen. We had it happen here at Shabbat. They wanted to take over. You know, take everybody out of the church. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm boy, I'm telling you, we had it. You know, and we saw it happening. I mean, we saw it happening while we were trying to start another ministry in Mississippi. We saw it from Mississippi. We weren't even here. Amen. But watch this. I don't want to get personal, but I'm telling you the truth. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 14, beginning at verse number 13, God told Satan what he was planning. And he told him, because God knew he was trying to backstab him. So look what God says to the devil in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse number 13. God said, you have said in your heart. Now watch this. I want to stop right there. God said, he didn't say, well, watch this. God didn't say you said it from your mouth. See, God has given us the spirit, the spirit to discern sometimes what a person is thinking in their heart. They don't have to tell you. Amen. You know, because they're not spiritual, they don't have to tell you. God said, for you have said in your heart. He didn't say it out of his mouth. He thought it. You know, God knows your thought before you think it. And many times God will reveal to us things that the enemy may be planning and thinking before they do it. It's a gift. They want to know, how did you know that? God showed me. God told me. God informed me. Because to them, God is some, some, some spook in heaven somewhere. No, God lives in you. And in him we live. And in, and, in, and in him we move. And in him we have our beer. God is just as present as your juggler vein. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God. Come on, y'all. When you think you're going to sin? After you die and go to a pie in the sky? No. You see the manifestation of God every time you look in the mirror. He's in you. Amen and amen. Come, can I take my time? <laughs> For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into the heavens. This is the devil. This is, this is the devil trying to backstab God. In heaven, y'all. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will raise my throne. Satan talking about he going to raise his throne. He ain't got no throne. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. Ain't that something? Amen. Amen. He said, I'm going to raise my throne above the stars of God. 
I will sit enthroned in the mountains and of the assembly on the most high heights of Mount Safar. I will ascend, verse 14, I will ascend, God's, no, the devil said, I, now he's saying this in his heart. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. The devil was, think, was thinking, I'm going to take over. And that's a takeover spirit. We got folks right, right here that we deal with. Amen. They backstab us. They want to take over. They want to be the leader. Amen. They want to tell you about the leader, you know, because they want to be the leader. They want you to follow them. And I've had it in the church. I've had it among bishops. I've had it among evangelists. I had it among apostles, you know, because they listen to what somebody else said about me, about you, and I wasn't there to defend myself. And a lot of times people think because you've been knowing this person a long time that they must know what they're talking about. That don't mean dilly squat. Doesn't matter how long. It was in them before they met you. Amen and amen. Now, David, the great prophet and king, told us, it's in the Bible, during tore the page up. He tells us in Psalms, good God of mine, I got so many, I got so many interpretations of Psalms 55. Psalms 55 and verse number 12 and verse number 13. He said, it is not an enemy who taunts me. Come on, y'all. I think this is the NIV version. But you can read it in the King James. I'm going to cover all of the versions of this. Watch it. For it is not, I'm in Psalm 55. Verse number 12 and 13. For it is not an enemy who taunts me. Then I could bear it. Now see, if it was an enemy, I could bear that. Nor is it one who has hated me, who insolently exalts himself against me. Then I could hide myself. But it's you, a man, my equal, and my counsel my companion, and my familiar friend. It's you. It was not an enemy. No, it, I could have, I could have, I couldn't bear if it was my enemy. You know, uh, nor was it someone who hated me and exalted himself against me. No, he said, then I could have hid myself. He said, but it was you, my equal, my counsel, my companion, and my familiar friend. Let me go to another message translation. This isn't the neighborhood bully. Watch this. This is a message translation of the same scripture. This is not a, a neighborhood bully mocking me. I could take that. This isn't a foreign devil spitting invective. I could tune that out. Watch this, y'all. It's you. We grew up together. It's you, my best friend. Now, this is in the Bible. He said, if it was an enemy, you know, insulting me, he said, I could bear it. If it was a foe rising up against me, I could hide myself. But it was you. A man like myself, my companion, my close friend. You know, it took me a while to grow spiritually to see those who tried to do me more harm. You know, my Aunt Minnie, bless her soul, in Washington, D.C., she told me when I was a teenager, she said that your enemy can only do you more harm if they can get close enough to you. And she was absolutely right. But it didn't start here. It started in heaven. It started in heaven. But this is this was the devil trying to take over heaven. Can you believe that? Is he dumb or what? 
Is he dumb enough to think that he could take over God? Or is they dumb enough to think that they can outdo a child of God, somebody filled with the Holy Ghost, somebody who got the spiritual gifts of God? You know why people try to do that? Because they ain't got it. You know, they don't understand the hours that we spend in prayer, the hours that we spend in study, the hours that we live to please God, beloved. And so they're barking up. My grandma used to say they're barking up the wrong tree. But it wasn't the enemy. It was, it was friends. You know, it was people that you trusted. You trusted them. You know, and they turned around and back bit you. Amen. Amen. But it's all is in the Bible like that. You know, Joseph brothers, come on, Joseph brothers in the Bible, his own brother. See, it can be a family member. It can be a family member. It can be, it don't have to be a friend. It could be a family member that does that to you. Amen. I'm, that, <laughs> that, I mean, we show you that in the Bible with, with Joseph. Joseph brothers conspired to kill him because he was a visionary. If you are a visionary, come on, y'all. You really got to be careful. Amen. If you have a vision, you know, the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. And you could be, you could have the vision not for personal gain. You could have the vision for other people. Amen. 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 You can be, you can have a vision. You know, like I have visions. I have a gospel. I have, I have um, a country western singer. And I have a vision for him, American Idol, Grammy Awards. You know, I have a vision. It ain't for me personally. I don't need a Grammy. Come on, I got gold and platinum albums. I've been around the world five times. Amen. And I have a vision. You know, so it's not personal gain. You know, like people talking about, well, you know, um, uh, 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 uh. you know, I'm not one of them preachers always asking for money. Man, I don't you know if you give to this ministry, you giving to bless you. You ain't giving to bless us. You ain't blessing us with your money. You blessing us because God told you to give. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Amen. You know, I was telling my wife, every year we pay almost $300 for our website. You know, our website ain't free. Every year, $300. Every year, from goldtoglory.com, uh, almost $300, you know. Well, what do you think? That, we supposed to pay for all of that, and we putting out all this information? No, you, you should help us. Hey, man, I don't need, look, <laughs> backbiters, boy. You know, I've had people that tell me about my suits. You know, he got on them Imani suits. I don't have an Imani suit. He got on them alligator shoes and crack. I don't even wear them no more. I got a, I got, I got a shoe closet full of alligators and crocodiles and eels. I got. I don't even wear them no more. You know, I can give them away. You know, I have, I have, I got two closets full of clothes. And I used to wear certain suits. And people say, well, he, he, he taking our money. He buying them expensive suits. You know, I got three thousand dollar suits, but I didn't buy. Them. Pastor Thomas Rowley over in Charleston, South Carolina. He had these suits made for me. I ain't pay a dime for them. And people are talking, well, he got all this, he got all that. You know, he's staying in these expensive hotels. Yeah, because I, I had enough points to stay free. You know, so they don't know. You know, because I don't walk around talking about, you know, I got suits with my name on the inside of them, but I ain't had to buy them. You know? People love my ministry. I mean, come on. They love what I do. They love how I teach. And they give. You know? And so, um, backbiters. And they say things about us. You know? And we're not there to defend ourselves. So, they're backbiters. Amen and amen. So, look. About me. Joseph's brothers. These are his brothers. People see you coming, and they talk about you under your breath. 
It's in the Bible. Joseph brothers. Come on. Joseph brothers. In the Bible. I mean, he was the youngest of the brothers, I think. Maybe Benjamin was younger than him. But he had vision. And the vision that he had would one day feed his father, his mother, and his brother. You know, and he was an obey, he was an obedient son. And he loved God. And his brothers conspired to kill him. In Genesis chapter 37 and verse number 18. Now, people will conspire to kill you, but they could be assassinating your character. Amen. They say things about you, and you ain't did nothing to them. Amen. You never did anything personally to them. You know, I am I mean, I've had people didn't like me because they said I was light-skinned. I ain't even know I was light-skinned. I never thought about me being light-skinned. You know, come on, ain't that stupid? But I don't trust that old light-skinned N-word. I said, light skin. I'm light skin. <laughs> you know, I thought I was black, you know, <laughs> you know, Cherokee Indian or something, you know. But I'm saying he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemy, and you're going to have backbites. I'm telling you, there's a song that the OJs did called Backstab. You know, I'm, and I'm, and I was in Philadelphia in the studio while they were recording songs like that. You know, and I hadn't really met. You know, I met some backsteppers while I was with the Blue Notes. You know, we had a couple of them in the group. You know, but I'm saying you're gonna have them. That's why you need to know the word. That's why He has blessed us, matured us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. One of those spiritual gifts is discernment and word of knowledge. And nobody's teaching you that, you know, because it's supernatural. It ain't natural. It's the fifth dimension. It ain't the third dimension. It ain't the fourth dimension. It's the fifth dimension, up, up, and away. You know, like the fifth dimension used to say, amen. So watch this. They saw Joseph coming. Genesis chapter 37, verse number 18. Write this down, uh, Ambassador Zelma, up there. In th Genesis 37, verse number 18, they saw Joseph coming in a distance. And before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. You know what they said in verse 19? Here comes that dreamer, they said to one another. Now, they said that before he even got close enough to them. But Joseph was a Joseph was obedient to God. You know, and just because we read in Psalms uh 23 that he prepares the table before me in the presence of our enemy, baby, this was happening in heaven. I mean, I mean, come on. God had an enemy in heaven, and God discerned what the enemy was thinking in his heart. We have that same gift. I mean, we saw, you know, we was at Shabbat Global Ministry. And we saw the plot to destroy the ministry. I went to, I went down to the potter's house to visit with Bishop Jakes in 2019 and came back and God said, sell the building. In 2019, God said, sell it. And so we contacted um, a broker and we put a big sign in front of the church and said, for sale. We didn't tell the members. We just put it up for sale because we knew by discernment what the plot was. And my wife told me we can't leave until God tell us to leave. And you know how God told us to leave? He sent COVID in March 2020. And he shut down all the churches. And we sold the church in 2021 in the midst of the pandemic. We sold it. But God had told us in 2019 to get out of there because there was a plot. But we owned it. We owned the building. It wasn't like we paying a mortgage. We owned the building. So God had it already planned. God showed us what to do. 
before the enemy could carry it out. And God will show you what to do before the enemy can carry out their plan. Now watch this. When God says, when Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Come on. He don't just say, Abracadabra, you got life and you got it more abundantly. Sometimes he will move you to another city. Sometimes he'll move you to another state. Amen. Sometimes he will move you from so-called familiar friends so that he can bless you. God ain't going to bless you in the middle of no mess. And some of y'all have heard God say, you need to leave this person alone. You need to get away from here. You need to move. I moved so many times, beloved, before I got to, before I got to Kankakee, Illinois. They said, well, where you at now? I was moving as an evangelist for 17 years. I mean, I was all over the world. Amen. But I moved residents. Amen. I moved residents, you know, from Texas, from Washington, D.C., to Texas, to Florida. I never dreamed I would be in Illinois. I never dreamed I would be married to Dr. Gloria Maria Cummings. But her mother saw it. I didn't even see it. Her mother said to me one day, my daughter Gladia, she's from Italy, y'all. Her mother was from Naples, Italy. She said, my daughter Gladia, she's a good catch. And I'm saying, man, I'm not trying to catch no Dr. Gloria. And then word got out when we started dating, word got out. As a matter of fact, somebody told me in my face. They said, man, all these bishops and all these apostles were trying to get next to Dr. Gloria. And you come to town and all of a sudden you got her. Well, I wasn't trying to get her. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I disobeyed God. God said, go north. I went north. I didn't know where, you know. But I came north, and I came to help build up the ministry. I didn't come here to marry Dr. Gloria, but thank God I did. Amen. And Mama was telling her, you need, that's your husband. I don't care what nobody say. She said, Mama, that's not my husband. She said, that's your husband. And she was here to see us get married. And I've never been happier before in my life. Amen and amen. But I had some backstab. And I know they watching this broadcast. They sharing it, you know, but it's okay because y'all bless me. Amen. And you bless everybody that you thought that you were going to stop in their tracks. Amen. Because you barked up a tree. You had no idea what you was barking at. So yeah, backstabbers, all of us have had them, whether you're saved or not. And you're going to have them. You probably with some right now, but it's okay. Because if God got you, no weapon formed against you will prosper. If God got you, he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemy. If God got you, more and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They can't stop your progress. Y'all all right? I ain't even got to my message yet. <laughs> Catch me in a couple weeks, y'all. Amen. If you would like to support us, amen. You can support us at ShabbatGlobalMinistries.com. Amen. You can, or, you know, you can do like the Madisons do every month. The Madisons send their money in by mail. You know, uh, we don't give out our home address, but they send their money in by mail. And they've been doing it for about five years now. You know, so I'm thankful for those of you who support us. You know, uh, Sister Tia, happy birthday to you, Sister Tia. Tell Noah and Chris and Jerron. Jerron just graduated from the university, and we thank God for you. Our Ambassador Zelma, we thank God for you. Amen, amen. Uh, Sister Thomas, we thank you. Sister Brenda, we thank you. You hear me mention these people all the time. But these people, they're not backstabbers. They love us. Amen. There's so many people that love us. You know, um, let me tell you something about where I came from. I was in the Nation of Islam, and I studied with Minister Farrakhan for 10 years. You know, I was in his home, in his car. You know, I was in Chicago at the 
the time I lived in uh, Texas. And as a leader, let me tell you what a good leader is. And people don't like him, but, you know, but he embraced me because he saw something in me. If somebody was to say something about me to Minister Farrakhan, Minister Farrakhan will call me in to Chicago and he will call the person in who says something about me. And Minister Farrakhan would sit us at the dinner table in the palace and he would say, now brother, tell brother Jeremiah what you told me that he said. See, we ain't had no backstab. Because if you said something about me, he would have you say it in front of me. The people that talk about me, have them, bring them to, bring them and say, look, he want to tell you what he told me. I love to hear. You know, because a backstabber is someone who says horrible things about you when you are not there to defend yourself. You know, and I've gotten to the point now, I don't feel like I need to defend myself because I ain't, I'm not doing anything. I'm not stealing. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm teaching the word of God. You know, I've been on for 41 minutes. I'm, I'm only on for 30 minutes. You know, but I'm not stealing. I'm not, I'm not running around with women. You know, um, I mean, so, you know, I am, um, I am excited because, I, you know, I can't even tell you. We love you too, Zelma. We can't, and Sister Brenda, we can't even tell you what God has in store for us. We can't even tell you. You know, as far as Grammys, I got Grammys I ain't even put out yet, you know, that I'm going back to release, you know, and um, I have a, and we have an artist, Gabriel Key, Country Western. You know, people laugh uh, when I said I got a Country Western singer. I never, I've never done Country Western before, but I know, I do, I know music. I love all kinds of music. I love opera. You know, I love symphonies. I love country western. I love Dolly Parton. You know, um, and so your best. Love you too, Sherry. You know, um, out of Philadelphia. I'm, oh, you're in Baltimore. No, no, no. You're in Boston. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. One of my Cape Verdean sisters. So I just thank God for all of you. You know, we're going to come back in two weeks with Backstabbers Part 2. Uh, I want to get really deep. I want to show you. It was in heaven, y'all. It was in heaven. So you know it's down here on earth. You know, I mean, Jesus said that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So you're going to have devils. You're going to have backbiters. You're going to have backstabbers. Because God told Satan in Isaiah 14 and 14, For you have said in your heart, I will ascend above the stars of heaven. I will set my throne above the thrones of God. Amen. I will be like the most high. But the God told the devil, oh, no. God told the devil, no, you're going to rot in here. It's all in Isaiah 14. So we love you. Amen, amen. Listen to that song, Backstabbers by the OJs. It's, you know, I mean, I was listening to that in the 70s, y'all. But listen to that song, and it's true. And God had a backstabber in heaven. As a matter of fact, the name Judas Amen. The name Judas. God had a Judas. The name Judas really mean backstabber. Amen. He plotted to get Jesus killed. And he saw Jesus walk on water. He saw Jesus feed 5,000 men, not including women and children. He saw Jesus raise the dead. And he wanted to backstab Jesus. Amen. And Jesus knew who he was. Jesus knew at the, at the Lord's Supper that Judas was the one that was going to betray him because Jesus had word of knowledge and spiritual discernment and he has blessed us according to Ephesians 1 and 3 with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we don't have to be around you. We can hear a rat piss on cotton. May God bless you. We love you. We'll see you in two weeks. Spread the word. Just spread the word.